if you ever get a chance to come here, I highly recommend it. It's a pretty special place. There's a grizzly right behind me. Well, I've made it to the Kootsmateen Grizzly Bear Sanctuary, and if you've been following along for any length of time, you might remember that I came here last year. It was uh, June. This time I'm a bit early. It's only May 11th, and the bears may just be coming out, although I did see a black bear on the North Shore and a grizzly on the South Shore on my way in. The reason that I came here is to try out my new windlass because that has uh, all been installed. So here is the anchor locker at the bow of the boat and the hardware has already been removed on the left, the hinges, and it's a little dirty because the fabricator has been using it to uh, shape the new lid that I'm getting made because of the shape of the deck. It was easiest just to give him the lid. And here's the new mount and lid covering the space that had the hatch for the anchor locker. The pedals on the left you just flip those little lids and then you step on them. One goes up, one goes down for the windlass. And I'll also have another control back in the cockpit for running the windlass. So I have options. I can be up here or back in the cockpit, which will be nice. The brand of this windlass is Maxwell. And the model was RC-10-8. And I think it's called 10-8 because it doesn't have the capstan on top. I didn't want it to sit too high. I still wanted fairly low profile. And I still wanted access to the locker. So I had them build this opening lid and you can still get in there. I swapped out my 35 pound CQR anchor and I bought a 44 pound or 20 kilogram Rockna. I've just heard so many good things about Rockna that I figured if I'm gonna get a heavier anchor I may as well go to that brand and I'm sure there's other good ones out there, but that's the one I've decided to go with. And it's nine pounds heavier. I also added uh, 25 feet of chain. So I swapped out the chain from 75 feet. Now I have 100 feet of chain. 
and then I have 300 feet of road and that's spliced in. You would have seen that as it paid out. And the install was pretty simple. I, well, <laughs> going back to uh, just how to even mount it, you saw that it's all mounted on a, a base. I replaced the lid, I took it right off. I had a fabricator do the uh, lid for me with the mount for the windlass. And I still wanted a little opening lid in it so he built that into it as you saw and it was a little bit complicated because there's curve a curve to it and it's less curve at the front and more curve at the back so it uh, but he did a really good job so thanks to uh, Daniel at Progressive Steel for doing that so quickly then I did get some help with the wiring because I don't have all the tools to crimp heavy gauge wiring and I uh, went to Seasport and had Dave help me. He does installs like that so I did some drilling and running wires and then he did some of the splicing and fittings and ends, crimping and all that so anyways a combined effort and the windlass was working fine yesterday and uh, that was just at the dock though, no load on it, so I'm going to see it, how that works when uh, I go to retrieve it. I know uh, there was an option to maybe put a battery up front and then just run lighter gauge charging cables to charge the battery, but there just wasn't anywhere really convenient up front in the boat unless I was going to have it exposed or like in a way that uh, I couldn't hide it. The battery is a pretty big item, so and I didn't want to have that battery in the actual uh, anchor locker. And uh, that's why I decided to go with just heavy gauge cables all the way back. And there was lots of room to do it. Uh, just had to snake a couple wires or, or cables uh, through some spots by around the nav table there. And yeah, anyways, that's about enough of the windlass, I guess. Um, I think I've explained it. But I am really looking forward to seeing how this changes uh, cruising for me. Like I mentioned, I'm a little bit early for the park. Uh, you do have to check in when you get here. There's a uh, ranger, uh, ranger cabin um, for the Kutzma team, and you check in. If you're staying in the park uh, boundary on the boat, it's $15 per person. Uh, it's just me this time, so I'm staying uh, two or three nights. I haven't decided for sure if it's going to be two or three. Yeah, I'm the only uh, pleasure boat in here. There's one other sailboat in here, but he's a charter, uh, does tours. And then there's a lodge on the way in, the Coots Lodge. I went there last year and stayed uh, at the dock there um, for the night. That's a friend of Devlin's who owns that. And I was told that I'm the first uh, pleasure boat in here this year. So uh, there's been a couple other boats, but not uh, personal pleasure boats. So there has been a couple sightings of grizzlies, uh, the ranger told me, and I did see one already. So it's about 6.30 p.m., so I'm not going to uh, get the dinghy all sorted out and start patrolling right now on along shore, but I'm going to uh, have some dinner, and then I'll start that tomorrow. And it's supposed to be a pretty good weekend, so I'm hoping for no rain, maybe some sunshine, and uh, more importantly, maybe some grizzlies.